Why Fatch? Why Fatch? Um, this was actually discovered by someone like a lone security researcher. Um, whew, I was surprised how long ago, like I want to say a year ago. Um, Symantec is the one who brought it back to our attention. And they, they wrote, let me introduce you to Linux.yfatch, one of the latest pieces of code infecting Internet of Things devices. We first heard of Yfatch back in 2014 when an independent security researcher noticed something unusual happening on his own home router. The researcher identified running processes that did not seem to be part of the legitimate router software and decided to investigate further. During his analysis, he discovered a sophisticated piece of code that had turned his home router into a zombie connected to a peer-to-peer -peer network of, in, of similarly infected devices. What does it do? It behaves just like a worm. Scanning, and this is me talking now. I, I kept my semantic voice by mistake. So what does it do? Uh, it behaves just like a worm. It's being called a virus, but that's wrong. It's a worm. Because uh, by definition, a worm operates on its own, requiring no uh, intervention from, from, from people. So this is a, a worm running loose on the Internet. It scans for other opportunities, finds them, and infects them with a copy of itself. It remains hidden. It coordinates its actions through its own private peer-to-peer -peer network. It contains, and the code has now been published and is public, so we can say no malicious payloads. It hardens the security of its host devices. It kills any running telnet daemon. Uh, and any other problems that are that are known to affect routers who have have public facing vulnerabilities, like for example, universal plug and play ports that are exposed. It keeps other viruses out by staying current on router vulnerabilities using its peer to peer network. It will retroactively remove any pre existing malware that it finds in the router. Um, and, as I mentioned, patches the router to cut off any other channels of entry. Uh, and interestingly, the observation was made that in looking, in reverse engineering this code, there's, for example, a lot of Perl that could have easily been obfuscated by the authors, but they chose not to. You know, they weren't really trying to hide. And in fact, in one place in, in, the, in the code... There's a copy of Richard Stallman's email signature, <laughs> which reads, To any NSA or FBI agents reading this, please consider whether defending the U.S. Constitution against all enemies, foreign or domestic, requires you to follow Snowden's example. <laughs> Seems unlikely. Um, so, now, Symantec estimates... That on uh, that somewhere, no one they don't have an exact count, but on the order of tens of thousands of devices are infected. Um, in there, and I don't think I put up a I didn't put a link here for some reason. Normally I, I would have. Um, but in their analysis, um, in order of decreasing infection rate, uh, China is number one. And remembering from memory that the uh, the pie chart, I, it was over a third, you know, like nearly a half of the infected routers were in China. Next up was Brazil, then Mexico, India, Vietnam, Italy, and Turkey. Um, and Italy and Turkey and those 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 latter ones were pretty small slices, uh, but you know, still enough to register. So. Um, and so what that probably means is it is tied to br router brands. Um, that's really the only reason that I can see. Yep, there's the pie chart. Leo ha ha has it up on the on, on the video. So it looks like, what, a third is China, I guess. And then maybe the balancing chunk is Brazil uh, and then Mexico in third place and so forth. So it, it must be popular brands which have inherently – have vulnerabilities 
that that allow the worm to get into them. That's the only reason I, I can imagine. Either that or ISPs w- could be proactively blocking the ports at their borders that prevent access to their 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 customers' routers behind the, the ISPs' own uh, border firewall. Those are the two things that that could explain a, ge- a geographic distribution that is so far from from like the the normal d- distribution based on numbers of routers. Um, so, okay. So then, in another twist, just yesterday uh, on October fifth, some uh, in an update to their posting, Symantec posted a screenshot of a dialogue that they had on on their site with the author. And since then, uh, Simon Zarafa tweeted a Forbes link that, again, I was short of time, so I didn't have a chance to put it in the show notes and, and even cover it because it, it, was, it was somewhat more refined. But I like this for the, the one from Symantec, although it's barely legible. I've got a copy here zoomed way in so I can read it. So Symantec asks, why did you write this and let it go? Its author says, first for learning, second for understanding, third for fun, and fourth for your and our security. Apart from the learning experience, this is a truly altruistic project, and no malicious actions are planned, uh, Prenz, and it nice touch that Symantec watch over this, the author said. So then they said, why release now? It was never intended to be secret, writes its author, and to be truly ethical, Perens Stallman said, close Perens, it needs to have a free license, which this person says agree in Perens, and ask before acting, also agree, so only halfway there. Oh, interesting. So this, so this person apparently presumes to make a future version which may notify its uh, users somehow that it's in the router and it's <laughs> helping them. So Semantic asks, why not release earlier? Response, to avoid unwanted attention, especially by other malware authors who want to avoid detection. Plan failed. Unwanted attention has been attracted, so release is fine. Semantic, who are you? Response, we are nobody important. Really? Semantic, why do you feel bad about Oh, sorry. Do you feel bad about abusing resources by others? Answer, yes. Although the amount of saved bandwidth by taking down other scanning malware, the the amount energy saved by killing illegal Bitcoin miners, (laughs) the number of reboots and service interruptions prevented by not overheating these devices... The number of credentials and money not stolen should all outweigh this. We co-opted your devices to help the general public, friends, in a small way. Symantec asks, why can I trust you to not do evil things with my devices? Response, yes, but that is of no help. Somebody could steal the key no matter how well I protect it. More likely, there is a bug in the code that allows access to anybody. So this person is modest and realistic. Should I trust you, asks Symantec. Of course not, is the response. You should secure your device, (laughs) which is wonderful. Symantec, why is this not a problem? Answer, Linux YFATCH doesn't use elaborate backdoors or zero-day exploits to hack devices. It basically just uses Telnet and a few other protocols, and tries a few really dumb or default passwords. Our favorite is password. These passwords are already well known. Anybody else can do that without having to steal any secret key. Basically, it only infects devices that are not protected at all in the first place, exclamation point. So... We have oh, the do-gooder vigilante yeah, worm. It's quite a Robin Hood. Yeah. And, you know, uh, back in the, boy, I think it was maybe Code Red or Nimda, those were both notor- early notorious worms. 
Um, I was involved uh, in some dialogue with the uh, DOJ at the time. That's back when, you know, I was, you know, th I, I had been subject to a lot of denial of service attacks and I was, uh, were, I was giving sort of like helpful, this is how the internet works, presentations to uh, the FBI and law enforcement groups and so forth. Um, there was some active discussion back then about whether whether we could write a immunizing worm. Mm. And, of course, the answer was absolutely not. You know, it is absolutely illegal to modify somebody else's equipment without their exp express permission. And, of course, that was not available. So uh, we didn't do it. But, uh, uh, it, I mean, this guy is performing a public service. These are vulnerable routers, and he's... And he's, I mean, all of his logic is exactly right. If, you know, he's not doing anything fancy, he's not using unpublished, unknown exploits, he's just gone in and taken over, closed the door behind him, removed the stuff he's found, and, and is then maintaining a, basically, a public-facing security network among all of these routers that would otherwise be, you know, really prone to being victimized. So, I, uh, you know... I say sort of in the spirit of Edward Snowden, who this guy obviously follows, uh, he's, he may be technically breaking the law, but um, he's doing a good, you know, the, the outcome seems to be uh, worthy of the method.